Uh, what we do today is, uh, I think it's very interesting, it's um, the question if uh, corporations with big uh, meat companies or at least big food companies is something we, we like to have. Are they our friends when it comes to vegan production or are they our enemies? And uh, Renato will do the presentation and I will do a kind of a role play. I will try to convince you for both sides. Yeah. <laughs> But let's start with the introduction. Renato Pichler, he's, uh, he has been vegan for oops, 24 years, mm -hmm. um, the founder and the CEO of the V-Label project, which is very remarkable. And um, he's been working for yeah, almost 25 years, full time for the largest um, Swiss vegetarian and vegan organization called Swiss Veg. And he's also on the board of the European Vegetarian Union, as well as TIER and VIR, which does um, education in schools. And that's me, Coach Mittinger. Um, I am yeah, do different things. I'm, um, first of all, master in geophysics, and um, later on I did also a PhD in food science. I'm the founder of a small project called Future Food, which uh, deals with um, alternatives to animal products current product alternatives as well as few futuristic products. Um, well, I'm, I'm also um, <clears throat> uh, working in, in um, IT and I'm, yeah, I'm on a scientific board of um, several um, like Good Food Institute, um, Albert Schweizer Stiftung, Webo, which is now called ProVeg and other organizations. So um, that's in brief something about the two of us, and Renato will now start to do the presentation. Here you uh, go. Thank you, Kuti. Um, yeah, we have the question, what should we buy? It looks very easy, but it has different aspects. When we, when we buy something, a product in a supermarket, for example, we support uh, the producer and the supermarket itself. So we have to decide always. The first answer is easy. If we buy meat, we support the meat industry. We don't want this. If we buy a vegan product, we support the vegan industry. So this is the easy part of the answer. <laughs> but there have also other consequences when we buy a product. Because now the success of the vegan movement has also uh, bring many big companies into the market. So even meat producers produce now vegan products and big corporations are interested in the vegan market. This is very different than 10 years ago. So we have now new questions and we need new answers for this. Should we buy vegan products from only vegan producers or also from big companies? And Kurti brings now the pros and against of this <laughs> discussion. First, Kurt Opponinger. <laughs> he is against this. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally against. <laughs> yeah. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm total, absolutely do not want to, to see um, big food corporations of big food companies in the vegan market, and I will tell you why. <laughs> There's many reasons for that, why we don't want to see that. What we currently see is that the ones who benefit mostly from the veggie boom or the vegan boom are not the small and ethical producers, but it's the big meat corporations. And by covering the market, first of all, they manifest their leading market position, which we do not want because they are not ethical companies at all. And the money they earn from the vegan products can also be used to support their other products, what they do in this animal products. The profits they earn is can also be used for, let's say, um, making better slaughterhouse facilities or at least any kind of infrastructure used to exploit animals. That's what we do. We give them the money and they use it for not only the vegan purpose but also for the other purposes. And often these products, these companies, these big corporations, the products they produce, they are not even vegan. Um, and they use egg products or milk products. And in many cases, these uh, egg and milk products are not even free range. They use, um, let's say, eggs from caged hens, for example, which we uh, do not want. And such products, we have to say, are absolutely not animal friendly at all. 
Sometimes the egg or the milk products which are used by these big companies are simply left over from the production of their animal products. And um, this makes um, these um, animal products more profitable for them. And yeah, and, and we pay for that. So, I mean. Klaus Geiser, uh, the founder of Wheat Tea in Germany, has left the Webo, the German Vegetarian Association, now called ProVeg, because he said, um, because of the ProVeg um, cooperation with uh, big meat companies. And he said um, this um, simply helps meat companies to destroy smaller and more ethical vegan companies. Anyway, to sum it up, whenever we give our money to the big corporations, um, we manifest their market position. We um, undermine the small and more ethical sm companies which we actually we want to support. And we use, and they use the earnings simply to manifest their market position and to push the smaller companies out of the market. And that's the reason why we absolutely should not support big companies. Thank you, Mr. Opponinger. <laughs> <laughs> then I can give the word to Mr. Proponinger. He is supporting vegan products in all kinds. <laughs> can you and here? Kurt Oponing, Proponinger. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Renato. My name is Kurt Proponinger. Um, <laughs> I have to say that um, the, if meat corporations start to switch over to a veggie or better vegan market, this is a really strong sign and a really good opportunity for the vegan market in the future. And I will tell you why. Okay? There's many reasons for that. One of the main advantages is that these big corporations, they have much knowledge, they have perfect machinery, they have best financial background, and they have strong connection to the market. So these are four relevant issues. They have the knowledge, they have the money, they have the connections to supermarkets or discounters or uh, fast food giants, for example, and that helps us to establish vegan products in a broad market. We don't ju just want to reach, you know, just the, just the vegan market, we want to grow, we want to reach out to, to where the people really are, and that's a big advantage, what they have, because they have the resources, they have the connections, they have the machinery and everything, the knowledge and the money. The interest of these big food companies shows that there is a move away from animal factory farming and from animal products towards more vegan products, and that is a really good sign for us. It shows that this could be a step towards a more and more vegan future for us. You see some examples like, uh, for example, Rügen, Rügenwalder in Germany or Landhof in Austria. These are big meat companies started, that have, they have started to produce uh, veggie alternatives and more and more also vegan alternatives. Um, and that shows, that shows the interest of them in this vegan market. And other, other, other examples, for example, Cargill. Cargill is a big agricultural corporation. They support Memphis Meat. Memphis Meat is um, a small startup in California, but they are very famous now because they produce meat out of cells instead of dead animals. And Cargill has invested together with others like Branson or Bill Gates or different other um, celebrities or famous persons. Um, Tyson Foods, which is the biggest uh, chicken marketer on the planet, many would say the biggest chicken abuser on this planet, Tyson Foods has invested in Beyond Meat, which is a remarkable startup for uh, veggie, for vegan alternatives to, to animal meat. And they, they are also supported by Leo DiCaprio, for example, or also by Bill Gates. So this is also remarkable. Tyson Foods, you know, the biggest chicken supplier on the planet, is investing in a vegan, uh, in a remarkable vegan startup. I think this is all good signs for us that we see a shift towards, shift towards, okay, a shift towards a more vegan future. But I tell you some more reasons why we should welcome the cooperation with uh, big meat companies. 
One of the reasons is um, when it comes to lobbying, these big meat corporations or companies, they do not act as our enemy anymore. They, um, if they start to produce vegan products as well, or vegetarian products at least, they are neutral. They produce both. They produce the meat and the alternatives to meat. And I give you an example from Germany. Um, the German sausage uh, agriculture minister, but he was called sausage minister, <laughs> Christian Schmidt, um, he wanted to ban the labeling of vegan sausages because he said, this is consumer deception. It's not a sausage and it's not a schnitzel. That's what he said, okay? And what happened when he did that? He, we had not everybody against us, not the whole meat industry. For example, Rügenwalder, let this example, they were kind of supportive that this is nonsense. And why did they do it? Because they became neutral became or maybe even in favor of us because they produce both. They see the vegan market as part of their future earnings, of their future strategy, and that helps us in lobbying when, when we, for example, we lobby against subsidies for uh, animal products or any other kind of discrimination of vegan products. This is very helpful if the big corporations are together with us or at least they act neutral. Yesterday we heard some talks about lobbyists in the European Union and they are really mighty and if we manage it that we get them on our boat instead of having them as an, you know, Goliath opponent, then this is also very helpful. But I give you more reasons why <laughs> I have such a proponing, uh, yeah. <laughs> One more thing is um, just a practical thing. When we lobby for vegan products, we are, uh, and imagine we have a really small, all these small companies, and we wanna have a big effect on this planet. We have to lobby thousands or 10,000 of companies to have the same effect as if we convince one of the huge worldwide corporations that they switch over to a vegan, to vegan alternatives. This is much easier to do. It's not easy to do, but, if we, but it's much less effort to convince one or two or three of the big global players instead of thousands, ten thousands of small companies that we really want to get away from animal products and to convince them that vegan products are much more sustainable, animal friendly, healthy, and all the like. So, many reasons. The infrastructure we use, we use the market um, access. We have, um, we make enemies to friends when it comes to political issues. And um, we have, yeah, it's easier to, to access them because they are just, we just have a few, a few companies, a few persons to speak with to make a vegan future possible. To sum it up, I'm a really strong proponent of uh, that we work together with uh, food corporations towards vegan products for a more and more vegan future on this planet. And I see this the, the realistic way. Thank you, Mr. Proponingen. Thank you very much. <laughs> so now you know what you do. Uh, we have two sides, and we have to side, decide every day when you go in the supermarket or in vegan shops or an online shop, buy some products, what you want to support. And it's not easy, so now I will bring some more detailed facts on it. And the first thing we have always to do if we want to make a decision is to define our goals. So what, what want we to reach with our, our consumption? Oops. Do we want simplifying the life for vegans? Yeah, I think so. Reduce meat consumption, increase consumption of vegan products, establishing vegan as the norm in the society or support a small, pure vegan shop or a producer. So the problem is, it depends which goals we have as our first priority, then we have to decide at one way or at the other. I bring an example from Switzerland, of course I'm from Switzerland, at the development of uh, the economy in the meat market in the last years. So 1996, Friedrich, was the first producer of vegetarian products in Switzerland, 
but also one of the biggest uh, producer of chicken products in the supermarket chains. So it's very big, uh, a bit similar to Riegenwalder Mühle, but as always in Switzerland, a bit smaller than Germany. <laughs> but <laughs> he was very big and started with vegetarian products. Then in the year 2000, Oreo, it's a big company, a holding, takes over Fredak. Then some years later, Fredak buys the tofu producer, Bernatur, it was a very small producer in location in Bern. Then sometimes later, they buy Nopa. Nopa is also a tofu producer, a small family who produce very good tofu products. Uh, we know each other for a long time and discuss this if this is a good decision or not. They can be still small and in some years perhaps uh, go bankrupted or uh, make an agreement with Fredak to become a, a part of a bigger company and can sell all the products in the supermarket chains. So now we have the product from Nopa also in the biggest supermarkets in Switzerland and not only in small uh, Hill Foods uh, stores. And now Fredak even makes cooperation with Tofu Town in Germany. So it's a big part of this company now, the whole uh, vegetarian and vegan food part. They have a lot of vegan foods in supermarkets and also in small vegan shops. So if we want to decide which products we should buy. Should we buy until 2014 NOPA products in smaller shops and now uh, boycott them because they are part of a bigger company or not? It's still the same machine, the same people producing it, but now part of a bigger company with the bigger machines. So this is always a problem because the, the market is changing now very fast. And another company the example from Alpro Soya, most of you know them, of course. They are taking over another producer in 1996, are bigger and bigger from year to year. And 2009, Dean Food buys Alpro. And White Wave is then uh, apart from Dean Food, uh, excluded from Dean Food with Alpro and becomes independent from Dean Food. And now Danone. Uh, is the owner of Alpro. So when we have to boycott Alpro from 1980 or since this year, when is the problem started? We see if a producer wants to produce more products, it is very difficult to mm, become a supplier of the uh, big supermarket chains because the, they have not uh, the infrastructure to, for this. So they have to go in cooperation with bigger players on the market. And we have now a very strong vegan movement. The market is growing. And so they have to decide what they have to do for the future for the, uh, their own companies. And another part of this all is our money is a very strong ballot. We support with every purchase, for example, the specific product group. This is the easiest part. Here on the left, vegetable farmer or a pig farmer. We know what we have to support. Then the middle part is the product manufacturer. There, if, of course, if we buy meat, then we support also slaughterhouses. We don't want it and produce. We have so many different producers. This is uh, more difficult to decide. And on the right, we have different, uh, different uh, shops, online shops, uh, supermarkets. We have to decide where we want to buy this product. So every product we buy is uh, supporting of three things, the produce of the raw materials, product manufacturer, and the distributor. This makes it more complicated as we think, the first step, I think. So and then if you buy a product uh, in a supermarket, for example, they see, oh, we have a good product, the people want it, then we make more products of this kind, so we make more vegan products. So this is a reason to buy it on the supermarket, to support the availabil availability in the supermarket of vegan products. Then we come to a more difficult uh, company. I hope you don't hate me now. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> you know Nestle has uh, about 6,000 different product branches. Some of them are vegan, some are vegetarian, and a lot of them are nothing of this. For example, we have Garden Gourmet. This is a brand of them. They bought it, uh, I think, some years ago and made it a big brand in Germany and other countries with only vegetarian and vegan products. So this makes now more difficult, as uh, Mr. Oponinger has also told us. Should we support it? So there are different reasons. If we support Garden Gourmet, then this will be a stronger part in the Nestle holding, and they will more invest in this part. If we don't buy it, they will yeah, think Garden Gourmet doesn't work. We, we support more the other parts of our uh, corporation. So this is a difficult question. I have not uh, the right solution for all, of course. I want only, only bring some reasons for or against it. And one of the big reasons why we should support also big companies is that the big companies are those who support the nutrition for a big part of our uh, people in, in the whole world. We see here an example, Germany, Switzerland, Austria. In Germany, uh, only five companies are controlling 90% of the market of food in Germany. In Switzerland, since only Two companies supporting, uh, we have 77 uh, of the food market. In Austria, it's only 40%, but it's, uh, the concentration is uh, ongoing. So in the future, we will see a, a smaller group of companies who control more. So this is a reason for supporting big companies to produce more vegan products, but it's also a reason to not supporting them that they are not going any stronger. It's also a difficult question. The threat with, uh, you have it here, and the threat with the big companies is small producers may disappear. Products of small, uh, mar for small markets. We are in the past a small market, the vegan, so we have almost no vegan products in the supermarket chains. We are now growing, and when the market will bigger, then we have no, now more vegan products, of course. Uh, then the bigger companies will increase if you support them, and they can decide which products are available in the future in the supermarket. So it's important to, to bring the vegan products in the supermarket, but also to support small producers and distributors. So we have always the, the question, what should we support more? My personal decision is that we can support the smaller producer for our own, but if someone asks us where we can get good vegan products, we can say that it's also available in the supermarket chain, that a meat eater can go there, where he is going anyway to buy his food, to buy also vegan food. So we need both supermarket changes and the small uh, producers. So, uh, yes. This was a presentation. This is a very difficult topic, so we have a lot of time for discussion it.